Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Sarwar. And networking has obviously been a major growth area for HP over, over the last many months. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that you guys seem to have taken an active interest in is the open source aspect of networking. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, so uh, thanks for having me, Jake. Um, you know, we've now posted 20 consecutive quarters of growth, which I think, uh, especially given what's gone on with the global economy the last couple of years, has been fa fantastic for us. And you're exactly right. We're uh, we're taking a very, very active role in open source and open standards. Um, it, it's really something that's not isolated just to HP networking. It's really almost, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the corporate mantra around, around openness. So if you look at OpenStack now being the foundation for all of our cloud efforts, um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a surprise that, uh, you know, even within networking, we have taken the lead on making sure the networking solution in OpenStack you know, upstream is just as robust as everything else that we're doing in OpenStack. So we've taken a, we've taken a leadership position there. Uh, obviously, we've, uh, uh, we believe that, uh, the, that, that SDN really is sort of a, 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 a it brings about this, uh, this democratization of the network, and we believe very firmly in having an open controller layer, hence our involvement in Open Daylight where we are now a platinum member, we're a founding member, but now a platinum member, uh, now you know, putting in a lot more resource and a lot more uh, uh, investment in that area as well. And uh, of course, you know, we continue to play in, in, the, in, in the, the traditional standard space as well, which is, which is hugely important. And you know, uh, that's, that, that's really, if you look at our involvement across open source, open standards, you'll, you'll, you'll see that we have probably the best portfolio of open solutions available of any vendor. So what does it mean to be a platinum member mm -hmm. of the Open Daylight Project? So what, what it essentially means is that we are committing not just a, uh, a, uh, you know, a, a set of uh, financial resources, you know, dues to, to, to the body, but also a minimum number of full-time employees devoted to the project. Right? And those could be folks who are involved on the testing infrastructure front, people who are doing actual development. Um, in our case, what it means is, you know, we're at, we, we are actually looking at a, uh, delivering an open daylight based controller in the future. Uh, and that involves obviously engineering effort to make sure our current solutions come forward. Uh, it involves making sure a lot of the great work we've done in our solution, the HP Van SDN controller, which predates Open Daylight by several years now, you know, uh, we want to make sure that a lot of those enhancements make it into the open community, right? So we're taking a very, very active stance, and uh, uh, we've we've uh, provided uh, uh, blueprints and proposals to, to actually bring a lot of fundamental improvements to the Open Daylight infrastructure over the next couple of releases. So how does a, how does a um, obviously for-profit company like HP uh, resolve itself in, in a world where providing all of this uh, architecture and, and things around an open controller that then could in theory be used by your competitors? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that, that's a good question, right? Open, open source doesn't mean it's not monetizable, right? Um, there are billion dollar companies built around Linux. Uh, and in fact, I would say we probably do more business in Linux than than, than anyone else. You know, we've uh, uh, the last stat I saw, we've got close to a thousand products out there that ship with open source components. Uh, that includes embedded on printers, you know, in our servers, management infrastructure. So, so you know, th there really is no conflict or tension on the monetization front. Open source is is really about a couple of things. One, it's about being able to leverage the best technology and being able to pool you know, this collective brain trust of talent and make, make sure you, know, you as a vendor are current with, you know, with some of these, these technologies. Two, it's about choice. And it's about choice for customers. So in SDN in particular, right, I use that word democratization, right, the democracy. We have customers now saying, yes, we get it, right? They're no longer talking about the separation of control plane and data plane. I mean, that's, a, that's an argument from a couple of years ago. They're now saying the promise of SDN was no more vendor lock-in, 
And how do I ensure that? And I do it by moving to an open platform. So they're demanding of their vendors an open platform that allows them to integrate best of breed infrastructure, hardware, as well as best of breed applications. And the best way for vendors to be able to provide that to customers is to work together on these platforms. Now there will be differences between the, uh, the final platform that comes out from HP versus the platform that comes out from, from someone else, but there will be a common core, right? And that's what the customers care about. So, and of course, the unspoken thing there is that, that everybody is going after Cisco in that, in that light. Where, where Cisco, Cisco is arguably the biggest vendor lock-in in all of networking. Well, you know, Cisco is also a participant in, in these forums, right? So, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, right? Uh, you know, I, I like to think of you know, SDN in general, you know, when, when competitors put out whole new product families of switches and ASICs and controllers and APIs and say, this is our SDN solution, right? I just scratch my head and say, wait a second, you're not getting it, right? The fact is, you're supposed to be able to be interoperable across those layers, right? And our involvement in standards like you know, OpenFlow, for example, right? Uh, it's a published standard and it's interoperable, right? And the same with what this, the, the same is going to happen with the controllers. You know, those those layers in the middle is where you have those hooks for interoperability, right? And to the extent that competitors are still out there peddling completely locked in vertical solutions, you know, at the at the end of the day, you know, we customers will vote, uh, you know, will vote with uh, their wallets, and our sense uh, of sort of you know the uh, our sense of what's being delivered so far by, by, by competitors is, it's not really cutting it, right? Uh, they're saying, yes, it probably solves a problem, but this is not the SDN that was promised to us. Where is it? Right? And that's what they're looking to vendors like us for. And so that's where, I, I guess, um, open SDN comes in, is that that provides the level of interoperability. A, uh, if I were to think of it as a, a software engineer, maybe that it's the API of networking. Absolutely, right? It's what, what, what SDN provides at the end of the day is programmability, right? And whether you're a customer that has the means and the capability to do it yourself, or you're going to rely on vendors or ISVs, right? To be able to cobble that together for you, right? The fact of the matter is we're moving away from where, you know, your incumbent vendor held the keys to everything and, you know, your need to accelerate some feature required a $5 million PO and still took 18 months to get implemented, right? That's the promise of SDN, is you know moving away from that model. So where do you see SDN going? Because I mean, we've seen, obviously, uh, most of the, the new switches that are coming out, and I, I mean, actually the entire ecosystem of, of HP is, is going open SDN. Where do you see that evolving um, now that there are products out in the market? So, you know, we, we, we're already starting to see customers deploy SDN solutions, right, to solve very, very particular problems. Whether it's network virtualization, right, where we have, uh, you know, several uh, several solutions now, you know, there's an OpenStack native solution that uh, uh, called uh, Virtual Cloud Networking, uh, which we have upstreamed into the community, and that's available to folks who, you know, download OpenStack Juno. It's also part of our Helion distribution. We have a, uh, a distributed cloud networking uh, product that uses MPLS and BGP. It's very service provider class. And then we have our federation of our fabric controller with VMware NSX. So again, you know, network virtualization solutions for, for all stripes, for all, for all kinds of customers. Uh, we also have solutions targeted at campus users, right? Uh, so uh, in particular, Microsoft Link users, right? Who, uh, you know, who tend to put uh, uh, demands on the network when they bring up video sessions or screen sharing sessions. So it's packet prioritization. Exactly. So we've come up with a way to, to, to actually automate all of that by uh, by being able to, to have an SDN application talk to your unified communication server. So you know, in real time, when you click a button and say, you know, I want to elevate this voice call to a video call, the server tells the network, wait a second, video coming, right? and we will prioritize that path end to end for you, right? And the results are noticeable. So the, the, 
what's happening is customers are seeing the value. Uh, a lot of them are going for the prepackaged applications, whether it's you know security applications with Network Protector, uh, optimizer applications like Microsoft Link. Uh, others want a platform to be able to build upon. So we have customers who uh, will say, you know, that uh, they only they can understand, you know, their specific load balancing needs, and all they want are the hooks into the network to be able to to build that app, and they're doing that, right? So being able to provide that platform and being able to provide not just cu not just customers a way to be able to to to, uh, to apply them, but also for partners and ISVs to take part in that ecosystem is very important. So we announced uh, a few months ago you know, what we call the SDN App Store, right? And essentially, what it is is a uh, it, it's a way for our partners and, and really, you know, SDN vendors in general to be able to showcase their solutions, right? Get them certified, uh, make sure they're interoperable across, you know, our products uh, as well as you know third-party products once they're part of the ecosystem. So, you know, there's a. Uh, I, I think what you'll see is there will be a shift in the way these applications are are consumed. Uh, in the way they're deployed, in the way they're managed. And you know, the, the only way that uh, we meet our customers' needs is by continuing down this route of openness. Because the, the moment we step back and you know, throw a cloak over it and say, we know, what, we know what you need, right? Or we're the only ones who know what you need. You know, we're back to the pre-SDN days and you know, we know we don't want to go back there. All right, uh, let's definitely not go back in time. Thanks, Arwar. Thank you so much, Jake.